Welcome back everybody into another back testing and review trade review session. So what I'm going to show you today is how I am starting to do from April my uh, review of my trades. So as you can see, this is April trades review and I have made uh, screenshots of every single trade that I took. You can see here uh, from number one till of course, uh, number two, three, four, five. So far in April, I took like 40 something trades. Uh, remember that I'm scalping. And as you can see, uh, you can clearly see uh, what trade I'm referring to, uh, what was the result, if it's a loss, a win, uh, and trying to have an understanding now afterwards what was i what i was doing wrong what i was doing right and that's to me very very important because if i want to understand what i'm doing wrong what i'm doing right it's very important to have uh, all the distinct characteristics of each trade and see then with a, a nice table to see what are the characteristics of my winning trades why and when am i losing and so on and so on. So as you can see here, now I'm filtering all the wins and we can see that um, the wins were only 14, not many, I would say, uh, out of 40. That's why I'm overall uh, losing. But it's very interesting to understand. Okay, I'm now using a 15 pip stop loss into a 30 pip TP, which is a two to one. Uh, risk to reward, which only requires around 40% to be um, profitable, 40% win rate to be profitable. I also understanding and seeing, okay, in the winning trades, like for example, let's, let's have a look here. Okay, this one was a winning trade. And uh, let me get you another example. You can see how many losing trades I had. For example, this cell is a win. I also want to, okay, 15 pip stop loss was okay. It didn't get tapped. And this is my 30 pip. Uh, this is even a 20 pip uh, TP. How far would it go? Would it go to more than 30 pips? So we can see now that it was basically 19, was basically a 2000 entry. Would it go almost 40 pips? So um, even more than 40 pips, so we'll say, yeah, even more than 40 pips. So I can say that, uh, yes, this trade went 40 pip before coming back. So I could possibly have a, a TP of more than 30 pips. Let's have a look at some other entries. For example, in this case, I buy 30 pips. You can see that the top was 30 pips. So in this case, if my TP would have been 40 pips, then I would have lost. I would have gone to break even because never price never went, never reached 40 pips. And the same goes over here. For example, this cell, this is a very good cell. I take 20 pips around here, but you can see how far it goes. My entry is at 2017. It goes down to 200, basically. That's 170 pips move, and I'm only taking 30 pips. So uh, is, I'm trying to understand what is the average range, average uh, TP when my uh, when I'm winning. As you can see here, the average is around 66. You can see down here. So um, all of these, apart from one. Uh, was the, a, a bigger stop loss was unnecessary. 15 pips stop loss was enough. So in this case, that would be an average of one to four risk to reward, which is very, very good. One to four risk to reward would mean like, um, I don't know, I would need like a 30% of win, of win rate to get profitable, but it's starting to uh, get a little bit of different from simple scalping wise. Yes, in this case, it's just a matter of minutes, but not always. So scalping wise 60 pip range starts to get a little bit uh, too much starts to get a little bit uh, a lot so uh, what i want to see is also that um of the wins that i had i also wanted to see the main lower time frame bias so 
as you can see here, if those two were matching, uh, no, sorry, if these two are matching, so the lower time frame and the um, lower time frame and high time frame is bearish are the same. For example, this cell might be high risk high reward counter trend because on the high time frame, this is a bullish trend. You can see prices making higher highs and higher lows. For me to take this cell is a counter trend trade on the high time frame, but might be in trend on the on the lower time frame. So let's see uh, if, if we have another uh, matching situation. For example, all these cells over here, every cell that I took over here, I don't know. I mean, it's clearly a bearish lower time frame. And if the price was coming from here, this is also a clear bearish high time frame. So in this case is matching. So what I wanted to see is bullish, bullish, bearish, bullish. For example, in this case, I'm taking a buy in a bearish lower time frame due to the fact that I am high time frame bullish. And for example, in this case, it's counter trend due to the fact that we are time a lower time frame bearish. So you can see here, we can have a check. 15 number 15 so is this buy okay so as you can see let's have a look at it so we are looking we are staying at a uh, let me do like this high time frame we are bullish so this lower time frame can possibly just be a pullback to then to like a 75 percent before the continuation bullish so taking uh, this buy is high time frame bullish so is matching the high time frame bias but is counter trend to the lower time frame break retest look at the pullback to these previous lows and then possible continuation bearish you can see that price is making lower lows uh, the fact that we are making a double bottom over here. That's what that was the main reason for this buy. Still, uh, it's showing you that we are still making a, a bearish, bearish, bearish movement. As you can see over here, I took a buy and price was clearly bearish. So um, lower time frame, this was counter trend, but it was matching the high time frame uh, bias. And that's also why you can see this is only a 21 pip, 21 pip move from like 2025 to 2027 uh, because that's counter trend. You see that liquidity on the bearish side, it's much bigger right now in this moment. It's much bigger than liquidity on the bullish side. That's because we're in a clear downtrend. So that's very important to understand and to review. Uh, so let's think about it a little bit. So we can see that in this, the wins that I took, we have 10 out of 15, one, out of 14, one, two, three, four, 10 out of 14, um, yes. 10 out of 14 wins are matching. So we are taking the same, uh, the bearish, the lower time frame bias, it's the same as the high time frame. Let's see, of these 14 wins, two, three, four, five, six, seven, half, 50% were in trend. So lower time frame is bullish, high time frame is bullish, and I'm taking the buys. Seven of those uh, were, was, were the opposite. So, uh, for example, here, bias was bearish, high time frame was bearish, but I took a buy. So, um, that's only based on pre planned area of buys. For example, 22. Okay, so this buy is all absolutely is a very one 10 people uh, win not even 
That's because we are clearly in a bearish trend and I'm only taking this buy because this high time frame 2010 is a key level and I think that it might bounce from there. It will actually, it will, but um, as a scalp, it's just because I think that it will do. It's not, it's very counter trend on all senses. It's counter trend from the pre New York, it's counter trend now on the lower time frame. So it's not really good. I would say that it's not good and it's just a minor win. It will go 37 pips, as you can see, because the price will go a little bit higher before coming back down again. So I don't like this. For example, let's, let's do this. So it's counter trend on a yes, yes. Okay. That's what I don't like. So let's, let's go on a yes and let's see the counter trend. So we have four. So two of those are like this, this one, 22, 23 are very bad. That, uh, very bad. Very bad. Okay. Let's have a look at the 26 cells. So as you can see here, uh, that, that's the, uh, the, um, this, the, the sample that I showed you before. We are on a high time frame bullish. Uh, that's the first, um, it's actually the first break below of these order block lows. Yes, we are coming into New York open, but you also you can see that I could have simply waited for a bigger PSA to be tapped for to take further buys. And uh, that would be a buy over here, 19, 1996 up to, that's like a, almost a 50 pip range compared to this, uh, this is a 20 pip. 20 pip scalp, as you can see the, the liquidity over here, 20 pip, it will go to 30, but that's counter trend. I don't like it. Yes, it was a win. I don't like it. So, um, okay. Okay. That's, that's clearly counter trend. I don't like it. Um, not a good setup. Better and in trend at the top of relevant PSA. Because that's, I don't want to fall into those. And let's go to 35. So we took a sell, 50% uh, retracement. Main the time frame is bullish, bullish, and I took a sell. After news and bounce from key level, late entry, uh, break even instead of loss. As you can see here, this would only go to 15 pips and then go back down. And we said that is the number 35. So as you can see, yes, that's what was a win just because I cut it short, but it was clearly, was clearly counter trend and was against the bias of these retail sales, if I'm not mistaken. So as you can see here, uh, price is clearly printing at the time of the trade. We were clearly printing higher highs and higher lows. We had the bounce from key level, I, was, I would say, multiple bounces. And uh, I took this sell just because it was a 50% retracement of this overall bearish move. So we had this. Yeah, it made the new lower low. And uh, that was a 50% of this move. But as you can see, my entry was very, very late. And yes, it will go like 20 pips, I would say in profit, but uh, not tapping my 30 pip profit. And where, look where the li liquidity actually was. The liquidity was completely on the bullish side. So uh, that's, not, that's not good. And let me delete this. And I want to do it like this. So for example, let me just write you. So that is a reference, clear bullish trend, bullish fundamental 
um, report higher low printed and key level respected So this way we can understand that uh, why this was such a bad move and really not good to do. Uh, price making higher, price and low, fundamentally positive report, hashed entry after key level was not broken. Okay. So, as we can see now, when uh, the it is matching, and we have the counter trend, that's not good. For example, here, um, in this case, okay, by bullish buy bullish so we took i took three buys now we are talking about when these are not matching and there were wins so i'm we are talking well right now about when i take the the trade in the direction of the high time frame bias regardless of the lower time frame so let's have a look at it so 15 okay 15 so i took this buy which was based on a double bottom after the top of this previous PSA. I don't know if this can probably be like a 75% retracement, but I think it's a little bit more than that. But it's still double bottom at big, this is, um, Okay, this is New York Stock Exchange opening, and I took it afterwards. And that's what I was talking about. Lower time frame, we are very bearish, and the liquidity is showing it, the, how much volume. But overall, I don't really dislike this trade, uh, especially because I saw this reaction going over there. This reaction could probably go over there as well, and even more. I don't know if there was any fundamental for this. I think it was like an ADP report on a, Tuesday, on a Wednesday. But in this case, I'm not really... Mm, I'm not really... Oof, I like it quite, uh, quite a bit. Number 33. For example, let's see. So we're talking about this buy. This buy was good. This is, was... Okay. This is a clear uptrend due to fundamentals. Then we have a correction, and it's a 50% correction. This candle is closing at 50% correction. What I don't like is that there's a reason why we are now in a bearish lower time frame, and it's because this, this entry, it, this uh, PSA, it's a strong hourly PSA. So that's where we had a first rejection. Let me show you. We have a first rejection over here. 
then we have a break and we test failing to break new make new highs and then we have a straight continuation of price making new lows price making new lows so as you can see here this buy was completely rushed but i'm not really uh, 2017 2020 oh this is probably it's at 30 pip, uh, tp yeah and i like it because it's a very nice entry it's a very it's exactly at the ppl and it's not late if it would have been here at this candle it would have not been profit it would not be 30 pips probably just because the fact that i knew what i was doing i knew that this was a 50 percent retracement and that's where my entry at this candle close i enter immediately so that's that's good and uh, yeah i'm not feeling completely uh, against it 38 this buys mm, yeah 38 why is it counter trend ah, okay it's counter trend only due to the fact that it's a consolidation but uh i really like it that's mainly because of what because yes we are in a very high time frame because that's the same the retail sales uh of before we are in a bullish high time frame we are seeing now uh after new york stock exchange we are seeing a bullish confirmation yes lower time frame we are in a little bit of consolidation i would not say that we are in a bearish one uh, but with the volume we have a breakout test of the previous order block eyes on the left hand side you can see i got lucky over here where a better entry would have been uh, waiting for the retest that, that would be also the retest of this previous trend line as you can see here or a pullback to this previous PSA instead of this one but anyway 15 pips was enough and we had all this liquidity uh, coming at these lows so yes it was a consolidation but I think I actually feel good about it and it will break above these previous eyes and give more a little bit more squeeze and that's where my TP was uh, was it um, doing volume time so I'm not feeling bad about it so as long as uh, it is matching the high time frame then I'm happy about it if this was not if this was matching only the okay let's say with a no I want to see the in trend okay only one so in this case I sold High time frame was bullish, but and I sold because the lower time frame was bearish, and it was a win, which would go, which would go 50, uh, 100 pips, 28. Okie dokie. Okay, so this was a good entry that I ma poorly managed, of course. So uh, we are in an overall bullish time frame. I think this was. Uh, a strong relevant PSA supply area uh, when I see okay this was when I took the, the cell this is the overall um, let me see so this is the bearish move and the retracement was over here so as you can see I took a loss over here because it was rushed it was not even 50% and 75% retracement it was exactly over here and that's where uh, the volume kicked in and would have gone to more than um, 100 pips so in this case it's taking a counter trend based on the high time frame so in this case that's it that's one win based on the high time frame mismatching but if i want to see for example the losses uh, so in trend but no so okay so this will be not matching and uh here i want to see the losses it's four this one was only one okay so we had four losses when i took 
when the price was matching the lower time frame but against the high time frame. Okay, so it's 516. 5. It's this cell. So high time frame, we are in a consolidation and I took a buy at a non relevant PSA. So this is just a stupid loss. We can say that on the very lower time frame, we are bullish, right? Yes, we are bullish. And I took a buy. So it does say that it's in trend, but it's at a non-relevant PSA and we don't have a clear break of this structure. We are so far making, uh, we, we, don't have, we don't have a direction yet. So that's why uh, basically I could also say that um, lower time frame was consolidation because it was not um, exactly. Price was not in a clear direction yet. Okay, dokie. So 16. So of course that one was an impatient entry. 16 is now the same. So now after this big spike of one due to uh, probably some news, I don't see that we are reacting at this previous PPL, this previous price points of interest, price, uh, supply area of before that gave these multiple rejections and the confirmation bearish. I took this buy over here just because we were retesting these previous highs on the left hand side and the main high time frame bias was bullish but as you can see here, yes this buy might have been good because we had a double bottom over here. but. After, afterwards, what happened? It happened that the price made a new lower low. Yes, now we had a huge spike due to news, but that doesn't mean that I, the price will skyrocket from there. So as you can see here, uh, I'm at mainly we can say that I'm entering buys when a lot of candles are red. So one, two, three, four, red candles and only two bullish ones. So that's not really good. That's not a clear indication where, that the price will continue there. So um, yes, you might say that I would like to enter this pullback, but that's because it's anti in anticipation of the co continuation in trend. In this case, it was a little bit conflicting, uh, a conflicting thing. Price is confusing and just reaching the same, reacting at the same highs. Um, that, that was not really good. 27. Uh, that was a sell in a bearish, but the high time frame was bullish. So that's a 27. We were saying. Okay, so we are selling now. Okay, that's because in continuation of the uh, bearish trend that just started. So we saw the break of these lows. We saw the continuation bearish with this break and retest that I took. We are still respecting it, and that's a 75% retracement. I don't, I'm not sure if this was a 50% of this overall move. I would say that it's not. Because if that's the move, really, I think maybe I took this move and I saw the 50%. Yeah, probably, yes, was that 50% of this previous move. But as you can see here, price simply reacted at 75 of the overall bearish move. And that's, I would say, that's a good, okay, okay trade. We had the candle confirmation for that. Was just unlucky. And of course, taking this entry and letting it run to these previous lows would have absolutely um, made made up for this loss and way more. So that's, that's basically um, a, a good thing. So uh, that was in trend on the lower time frame, but I have a bias. Mm, I wouldn't say that high time frame is bullish. Probably yes, after this bounce, it was still bullish. 39. Okay, so now, okay, this was just a stupid entry. After the news, I just took a random buy with a spread of like three, four pips. 
and I was taken out in like one second. And you can see that after seeing this strong rejection, I managed to take this cell and it was a little bit lucky, but um, no, not even, yeah, a little bit lucky. And it went to 30 pips afterwards, taking in trend after price clearly made, as you can see, clearly made a new lower low, breaking below these lows. And now the, uh, the retracement of this bearish move is like a 61, 75%. And that's where the continuation could have had we could have anticipated the continuation in trend. Now let's see the counter trend over here when the price is not matching. <sighs> so we can see, really see that the price was not in a real direction yet. There was no clear direction, um, but Let's see, why did I say that is a good entry point? Number 19, do we like it? Number 19 is this one, is buy. It's a good entry point because it's just close to the PPL, but it's just against the trend. Buy, yeah, that's why it's counter trend. Bullish on the high time frame. You can see that it was not bullish. If you look at it, it was not bullish. Mm, this high time frame is not bullish. We can say that it's either consolidation or bearish, but um, I don't know. Okay, so number four, strong bearish candle closing below PPL, bull enters rush after seeing a strong rejection. That's just bullshit trade. Breakout trade, I don't like them. Break test, 37. After a small breakout, that's uh, that's the problem. Number thirty-seven. That's the issue is that uh, we didn't see a break, clear breakout of this previous PSA yet. So as you can see, price was still below this previous low, below this previous high. But since I wanted to validate this entry, uh, I took this entry at the candle close in anticipation of the continuation bullish. But um, either I enter over there and that still would be a break even trade instead of a, of a loss. Uh, this entry is just doesn't make sense. It is too rushed and I should have waited for maybe better, better entry and then kind of information, kind of information. And then with a candle closing like this, entering in anticipation of the continuation, maybe with a week that will top these previous highs on the left hand side, for example, that would have been great. We can do it like here. So that's what I would love to do, to see from a trade, a breakout trade, not this, not even, not, not, not even a breakout. This is not even a breakout. So basically, if you want to recap uh, what we saw today, uh, since it's been already half an hour. So, so far, let's do a recap. Recap. So one. Entry better if matching lower time frame and high time frame bias. Buy on bullish plus bullish. Okay, entry. If high time frame is matching, 
but not lower time frame. Sample buys on a bearish correction of a frame bullish market structure. Three entry in in counter trend. Like two, but around you see, uh, stupid for so, more momentum and volume if matching the lower time frame. Um, and Especially after tapping relevant places, keywords. So this is mainly the recap of this study session. Okay, let me just I want to do it. In white in white. like this. Okay. And just better is if matching the blah 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 yada yada. That's that's basically it. Okie dokie guys, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you for the next video.